This is about discipline versus elasticity. Okay, this is the concrete place where, where it is. So you can imagine that, and, uh, and I put this in the notes here, you can imagine thinking about a world in which there's a fixed quantity of money here. A fixed quantity of money, and at any moment in time, um, we can therefore describe who has the money by a point. So this is time here. And there's a pattern of trade between you and me, and it goes like, you know, like this as we're, as we're trading, that this is your, your money balances and this is my money balances. And so when, I, when, when my money balances are going up, that's because I'm selling some goods to you. When my money balances are going down, that's because you're, you're selling goods to me. But the total money isn't changing. Total money isn't changing. If there's not very much money, okay, then people run out of money, okay? And some, some transactions that, that we want to make are impossible to make because you don't have the money to make them. That's discipline, okay? Similarly, you know, if it, if it were here. The pure credit economy, we could think of it as starting at zero instead of starting at a half of the money supply. And similarly, there could be some, I'm going to, have to see if I can copy that a little bit. Okay. This is zero here in the pure credit economy. And let's just put. And you can see that in this economy, um, this is maybe my credit limit here. And maybe this is your limit here. that uh, this is me borrowing from you, this is you borrowing from me, this is me borrowing from you on net, back and forth. And so the transactions involve, and sometimes there's no credit, right, here along zero. The credit all goes down to zero, and sometimes it expands in order to facilitate transactions. So there's expansion and contraction of, of credit in the course of, of, of uh, the pattern of payments. There's no expansion or contraction of money. Here, there's just shifting from one pocket to another. So let's suppose that you and I are the only people in the world, okay, and that you are making something I want and I'm making something you want, um, but that these wants and, and productions aren't lined up in time, so we have a problem. I need to get your stuff without having anything to give you. You need to get my stuff without me having anything to give you. So, so barter's not going to work here. Okay. So one way we could arrange our, our lives, okay, is to have money. You can sell me some goods. So I'm writing minus goods. So you, you had goods on your balance sheet and now we're subtracting them from your balance sheet. And sell them to me plus goods. And I send you some token, okay, in the other direction, okay. So minus a there's a change in my holding of money, uh, delta M, okay. And here plus delta M. Not so complicated. We're going to start simple, okay. That is. Uh, Money. That's money. But suppose there is no money in this economy yet, or we haven't agreed on it or something. Um, let's now think of another, another mechanism. We could do this entire thing not with money, um, but with credit, with pure credit, just by keeping track of, of accounts. So I get the goods from you, and I say, thanks for those goods, and let me just write a little note to you um, indicating that I owe you. I owe you. And that's a liability. It's a debt. I owe you. And that is a, I'm going to put um, delta as changes in IOUs because we may already have IOUs out there as well, and there's just more IOUs now. Okay, I owe you more because I have these goods. So this, is, this, of course, requires us 
to trust each other and things like that, that these are, these are IOUs. And this might be the sort of thing you use with friends, right? Like, I'll pay for lunch today, you'll pay for lunch tomorrow, that sort of, that sort of thing. You're familiar with that. But if we don't trust each other, so that's, that's the pure credit kind of system. One thing I want to note about this pure credit kind of system, which we'll come back to is kind of important later on, um, notice that the quantity of outstanding IOUs increases when we make a transaction. You know, we're writing a new piece of paper that says IOU, whereas when we did it with money, we're just exchanging existing pieces of paper back and forth. The, the money supply isn't changing when we, when we move a piece of paper from my pocket to your pocket, okay? But the credit supply is changing. The outstanding quantity of credit is changing when I write an IOU. So there's an expansion of credit in this, this mechanism. So it's a little different. Okay. But now suppose that, uh, you know, we don't trust each other. Uh, we don't know each other well enough. We are not sure we're going to see each other again or something like that. Um, so now, but we trust some third party. That's why I left that room in between these two, okay? And that third party um, is willing to step in between the two of us, okay? Accepting my IOU and issuing its own IOU, which you accept. I'm going to call this third party a bank. Okay. Now I've used M, even though this is a liability of the bank, and it comes from nowhere. It's, it's an expansion of the balance sheet. So just like in the pure credit economy, there's an expansion of the money supply, there's an expansion of credit, in order to facilitate this transaction. Okay. There's more money because money is a form of credit, actually, in this world. It's a liability of the bank. So that's why it expands and, and contracts as, balance, as, as, as the uh, patterns of trade uh, move. All right. All baby stuff. Okay. But some deep and puzzling economics under, underneath that. This, of course, is, is much more like the modern economy. Okay. The mod the modern econ this is how the modern economy works okay. in, in a very stripped down, simplified way. If, we don't, if neither of us is willing to uh, lend or borrow to the other because we don't trust each other, um, then we could have the bank here describing this. This is my limit. The bank is willing to lend me up to this, but I'm actually willing to lend the bank, you know, any amount of money conceivably, a lot more than you, you know, a lot more than I would lend to you. Uh, so I can build up positive balances very large, um, and, uh, and the bank can do business with many people as well at the same time. So this, tri this multilateral this multilateral system is a, is a credit system. So th this is the first point to emphasize that, and we're going to go into this in more detail with actual instruments and Fed funds and all of that sort of thing. But understanding that the payment system is a credit system, okay, not a money system, and that it has to be a credit system in order to have sufficient elasticity to ensure that people who want to make mutually advantageous trades are able to make mutually advantageous trades, even if none of them have money at the moment. They don't have any gold or the thing that's fixed in quantity, the discipline thing. Okay, credit is necessary in order to facilitate elasticity in the, in the system. And so when you go look at the actual system, expect to find credit there. It's going to be there. We're, we're going we're to see it. Sometimes it doesn't look like credit.